Hello, in this video I want to talk about timer interrupts for microcontrollers. Here I've got a flow code program and on the panel you can see I've got an LCD connected to port C. I've got some hardware here, we'll look at it a bit. Um, it's a pick development board with a little combo board uh, with the LCD on. And I've got a interrupt program. On the main program I initialize the LCD uh, and then I enable the timer interrupt. But you can see there's no code in the main loop. All the, all the program, if you like, is done by the timer interrupt. So double clicking on the timer interrupt, if you look at some of the properties here, this first drop down box shows you all of the possible interrupts on this PIC micro microcontroller. And you can see there's quite a few different timers and they've got different properties. And we'll select timer zero and then look at those properties. So we have a 32 megahertz crystal on the outside of the PIC micro microcontroller and timer zero is a 16 bit counter and it's going to count um, at 32 megahertz and when it um, overflows it triggers an internal interrupt. So at 2 to the power of 16 that's about 65,000 clock cycles it triggers this interrupt and then we divide it again by 4 and um, we can also use the pre and post scalars. So if we select say 1 to 2 that gives us an interrupt frequency of 61 hertz and a little bit. So what's going to happen there is every uh, 61 times a second it's going to run this macro timer interrupt. If you look at timer interrupt what I've got is a couple of variables. Timer int count which is counting at 61 hertz and second count which is counting at 1 hertz. So the first thing we do is we increment timer int count and then when 61 of those have passed we increment the second count and reset the timer int count. And what I've got here then is a program that um, alters the cursor and then prints the number. And you can see that simulating and the interrupts are, the timer interrupts are not done faithfully inside flow code at the right time, but they are simulated. So you can see we're simulating uh, quite quickly. Now, one of the issues that we often get in technical support is that people have underestimated the length of time that their routines take. And because of that, it's actually bad practice um, to put any code other than the bare minimum inside your interrupt. If you put lots of code inside here, then there's a chance that the next interrupt can come in before this code has finished executing. And whilst you'll get away with it with this simple program, as you get more sophisticated programs, that becomes a bit of a liability. So it's good coding practice to keep your code down to the bare minimum here. And if we look at the hardware, you can see that um, we now have a counter which is counting at one, one second intervals and you can see that on the hardware there. I'm just going to get rid of uh, that there. Okay so you can see how that works now let's just go back a bit to this little problem where actually our frequency is not precise and that's essentially because if you take a 32 megahertz crystal and divide it by two, you don't end up with a nice number. And because of that, if you look at crystals that are available, in this case from RS, you see weird numbers. In this case, there's a crystal here at 12.288 megahertz. And if we enter into a calculator, 12.288.000, and if we divide that by two a few times, this is essentially what a counter is doing. And if you take that frequency, 12288, and you divide it by two to the power of something, I'm not counting, then what you end up with is a nice number. In this case, 375. So if you count 375 of those cycles, then you'll end up with exactly one second. And that is why you can see that crystals are available in strange frequencies. Now we've got, for some reason, a 32 megahertz crystal. It doesn't quite produce um, something which is exactly a second, but for most purposes it's fine. 
Okay, that explains how timer interrupts work. Thank you for watching.